continue with our discussion on leadership. Remind you that when we talk about leaders, we are talking about influence. The currency of leadership is influence. So when you say so and so is a leader, you mean he has a following. There are people who admire him or whatever reason would like to follow him. That's who a leader is. And we are taking Bible characters in order to learn lessons on how we ourselves can be better leaders. You know, that's why the Bible tells us the reason it was written was for our learning. So we need to draw lessons out of uh, those Bible leaders, one after the other, because they are all put in the scriptures so that we can be better people, better leaders. We want to pick a character called James, son of Zebedee. James, son of Zebedee. He was a, we can call him Apostle, uh, Apostle James. And um, the Apostle James is mentioned in all the Gospels. You know, you, you can get his name in all the Gospels. You also can get him in the book of, uh, book of Acts, chapter 12, where he, is, he suffers martyrdom. The same guy. And um, so when we know his father is Zebedee, we also know his mother. Not many, many of the apostles do remember that the mother was called Salome. And of course we know his brother, his blood brother. They were called by Jesus together. And that is John. You know, he came, we even know his location, where he was born, where he grew up. It was in Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee. That's where these two sons of Zebedee came from. What was his profession before he came to Jesus? He was a fisherman. Then, for the rest of his life, he became a disciple of Jesus Christ. That whose leadership we want to study and understand. You know, the Apostle James was honored with a favored position by Jesus Christ. He in what Today they would call a kitchen cabinet. Not only was he one of the 12 chosen disciples of Jesus, but he, was, he would be taken on special missions where there would be just three or four of them. The other people in this kitchen cabinet were his own brother John and another talkative guy called Simon Peter. One more great distinction of the Apostle James was to be the fact that he was the first to die. Of all the Christians, the first to be to die for his faith was our friend uh, James. So he didn't serve the Lord for a long time. Let's just see what, what we read in Matthew chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James, uh, the the brother of James and led them to a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. You need to understand one lesson we can draw from here are several. Number one, Although you are leading a whole group, Jesus teaches us it is important to invest yourself in a few, and he got actually 12 of them, who are in a training course, being prepared to continue with the message beyond Jesus' death. But then beyond those 12, he picked three, the two brothers of Zebedee, sons of Zebedee, and Peter, and he would take them to special experiences. What did he want? He wanted them to be the people that would lead. And of course, Peter became one of the leaders of the church after the, after the, after the, the, death, of, the death of Jesus. He had invested extra on, this, on these three, three disciples. But you need to understand something. The greater uh, the, the leader, the greater the, respon the responsibility. So when Jesus is keeping you like that, he's giving you a special elevation. He is also giving you some special responsibility. And you need to understand that. That you can't become a leader just by a name. You can't become a leader 
just by uh, the fact that you are favored by the boss. You become a leader by offering yourself, like James finally did, to die for his faith. And we need to understand as a leader, if you really are going to be a good leader, you must evaluate whether what you are leading the group to is worth your death. If it's not worth your death, you are unlikely to become a good leader. You need a commitment about moving this group to a better place, and that better place is so far much better than where they are, that you are willing to suffer for it. The more committed you are to something, the more uh, prepared you are to suffer for it, the greater will the, be the following and commitment of people with you. And the much easier it will be for you to realize whatever it is that um, you, you have set out as a group to achieve. And that will be quite, uh, quite an important thing to understand. So that, that is James, James for you. Committed to the, to, to the calling and committed to the leader and committed enough to go the extra mile with the leader. You know, this James, son of Zebedee, was nicknamed by Jesus. <laughs> they were both nicknamed Buanages. Or sons of Dada, what a what a nickname! It sounds like Jesus Jesus had nicknames for his disciples. And um, we need to understand why we have to keep talking about uh, James and explain who James is, because we have three James in the Bible, three of them. Number one, James is the apostle James, the brother of John, whom we are discussing. But there are another two. The other James is called James, son of Aphias. And the third one did not become an apostle, but was a follower because he was the brother, the blood brother of Jesus Christ. And he later became the leader whom we, the leader whom we see in the book of Acts. The, the guy we see in the book of Acts was not an apostle when Jesus was alive. He became an apostle as Jesus with Jesus' death. And finally rose on the ranks and became one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And that James, who is in the book of Acts, is also the writer of the book of James, which is in the Bible. Now this guy, like you have said, this James, the one we are studying, son of Zebedee, is the one we have said is in the inner, inner circle. And um, he proclaimed the gospel after Jesus' resurrection and was the first apostle to be ready to die and actually died for it. What are we learning out of this? Your leadership can grow even if one of you are just one of many similar people. You know, James, ah, which James? That doesn't stop you from pulling out of the many James around you and becoming somebody special. A lot of us get discouraged when we are so similar with others. We feel like whatever I can do, karaoke can also do so and that discourages you and many leaders want differentiating marks don't have to you can be yourself similar to other people maybe you come from the same tribe or you come from the same uh you come from the same training yes you have the same temperament that doesn't stop you from pulling out and singly becoming what god wants you to be and that's something you need to ask yourself as a leader are you struggling too much to differentiate yourself? Stop. Just be yourself. And even if there's somebody else like you, don't worry. You may even be twins. Very, very similar in every way. People mistake you for one another. But there's something unique about you. That's why your damn marks are different. You are that mark and your twin brothers that mark do not look the same. Why? Because God created you uniquely different. The people... The people we are talking about are two different people, but with similar detailed features. So do not try to be like your brother just because you are twins. Be what God has created you to be, and it will help you to be the kind of leader whom God will use. When you try to change from who you are because you are similar to others, within no time you'll be, you'll be uncomfortable in, in that skin, and you'll not come out who you, who, who, who you should be. 
So just enjoy being yourself, however similar you are with others, and you will discover how God himself will give you achievement. That may differentiate you, but you do not set out to just look queer. You know, there are even people who want to do things differently. And in the process, they become like clowns. But all they are doing is trying to be different. I think it will be important to understand that that's not what leadership is all about. Leadership is taking the group to a better place, but doing so from your skin, the way God has created you. You know, one of the things we know about this, this James, the apostle, is he was loyal to Jesus, committed to him, going wherever Jesus wanted. He apparently had outstanding personal qualities, so wonderful according to Jesus, that he actually, Jesus actually put him in the inner, in the inner cabinet. Now, you have to understand that loyalty is important. You as a leader must have loyalty to your membership. Three things show when you have loyalty. Number one, you do your assignments. Loyalty forces you or brings you to where you, you have to do your assignments. You don't skip them. Number two, loyalty shows concern about the person you are loyal to. And number three, if there is loyalty, it means that you are willing to suffer in order to protect the person you are loyal to. So what you are learning here is just like um, uh, James finally died for his Lord, a good leader will be loyal to the group. And like begets like, the moment the people understand how loyal you are to them, what will happen is that they are also going to become loyal to you. Because you require that cohesiveness for you to carry out the big task that the group needs to have, the country needs to have, the clan needs to have, and it will be important. So loyalty is a critical leadership requirement. And you should not be demanding loyalty from people. Set the example by being loyal to them, where they know they don't have to keep defending themselves. Their leader will defend them. They know they don't keep to the, having to... Having to to, to, to look after their back. Their leader is looking after their back. That's the kind of loyalty that gives security to the group. A group that is insecure will do the things that they are supposed to be doing, looking aside, looking behind. And that is a waste of valuable time for a group that has a, an objective, has a vision to achieve. So James teaches us about loyalty to the leader. And in the process, I'm also saying that for you to get loyalty from people, you also must be seen to be loyal. You know, here we have two people um, called from the same family. Salome and Zebedee gave Jesus James and John. And uh, with his brother James and John, we have learned that they they seem to have been rash and sometimes even unthinking. They don't seem to have always applied the gospel that they were being taught to their own life. But James was not above making... So therefore, James and John were not above making mistakes. Can you imagine, for example, when a Samaritan village rejected Jesus you know, James and John <laughs> said, hey, why don't you call fire from heaven to burn this place? That's the kind of people they were, violent, revengeful. And that doesn't sound very, very, very positive. Isn't that why they are finally called Bonages, sons of thunder? And this example about burning a Samaritan village is a good example of the kind of people we are talking about. The mother of James also and also comes, uh, comes along. She oversteps her boundary. She can see that, that Jesus loves his family, but she oversteps her boundaries, asking Jesus to grant her sons special possessions in the future kingdom. 
So there are many wrong things about this 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 John. And um, what we learn out of it, a leader does not have to be perfect. But in as long as he admits his mistakes, is willing to learn from them, and is willing to apologize or repent, God can take can make this person full of mistakes, grow him, his leadership, into greater leadership, despite the weaknesses. Sometimes, as leaders, we are struggling as much as possible to hide our own mistakes. But some are so obvious that that, that it's only you who, who thinks people don't know. Admit who you are, be honest who you are, but learn something from your own mistakes. And then you'll be able to move on. You know, leaders who admit when they go wrong will get a bigger commitment from their followers. In as long as they are not proud. You know, there's two ways of giving a testimony. You can say, you know, I killed so many people. You can't even count how many people are killed. That's when I was telling the story. Another one, I'm so sorry that I was so rough. Like Paul kept repeating, I murdered many people. How terrible I am. I keep praying that God will help me to do good more than the bad I did. You're telling the same story. So you should, you should admit your mistakes, but not be proud of them. Because by being proud, you are telling others to copy you and, be as, and make similar mistakes. A good leader is not perfect, is what we are learning, but a good leader admits when they do their, they do their mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and he, and tries their best never to repeat the mistake they have they have they have done because that's what will show they have actually learned of it. And uh, can you imagine James and John went on to become to become people that we are studying now, despite their weakness in terms of their background. It sounds like it is their family that they had this background of you know revenge and wanting the best competition because of course the mother seems to be similar. But that background, that personality issue, did not stop them becoming what God wanted them to become. You know, James was actually among the very first people to be recruited. When Jesus was recruiting the 12, the 12 apostles, James was among the first one. When Jesus called these two brothers, he called them out of fishing. They were fishermen. And at that point when he called them, there with his father Zebedee on the Sea of Galilee. Interesting, if you read the scriptures, is that as soon as they are called, they did not ask for time to prepare. They immediately left their father and their business to follow the young rabbi. James was probably the order of the James was probably the order of the two brothers, because he is always mentioned first. It is James and John. Now, but you see, out of this we learn that you growing together with, with a brother, being in a family that looks united and that has a, 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 that, that has a, a family business, does not stop Jesus using both of you. Can you imagine? You will not have imagined, if you are in Africa today where nepotism is regarded as such a big crime, you would never forgive Jesus for he had all the people all over the world. How could he choose two people in the same family? But he did. You see, what we are learning is you should not disqualify your own brother from leadership unless there is a rule of the group that the brothers are not to work together. You do not, and a lot of people have what I call um, reverse ethnicity. Why do I call it reverse? In order to try to prove that they are not tribal, in order to try to prove that they are not racist, they punish their own people. If there are black, you employ whites. Even when there is a black who is very, very uh, qualified. But you, if you employ a black and you are a black, you will be accused of being a racist. So in order to protect your own name, not for the good of the group, not because there are such rules, but you just want to protect your name. You add up 
not involving the best qualified person who would have helped the company or the organization to go places. You don't give them opportunity. Jesus was not like that. He saw the two boys, John and James, and he realized both of them could add value to the kingdom. And he put them in. Out of the 12, two came from the same family. And I think that's a very, very, very important, very important thing to, to understand. So, similarly, look at people's competence more than their bloodline. However, if there are rules against it, then obey the rules, especially when you are run, running a public organization because the public determine what rules to apply. But if it's your business or something you own, put the matter up for vote. Let everybody decide can, can, what are the rules. Can we employ people from the same tribe? Jesus, anyway, set the rules. You know, three times the King Kitchen Cabinet of James, John, and Peter are being invited by Jesus to witness events that the rest of the nine disciples never got to know. Let me list them. One of them was the raising of the daughter of Jairus from the dead in Mark chapter 5. Another one is the one we read a little earlier, the transfiguration. The third one is the Garden of Gethsemane to witness Jesus' agony. And you can see in Matthew chapter 26, you can see when Jesus is in a lot of pain or when Jesus is doing something uh, complex or when Jesus is going to experience something that can make people misunderstand. He, picks, he takes the, the three disciples who are likely to understand. If you want to grow your leadership, you must be a perpetual learner. You must be willing to learn. Learn with a big group, learn with a small group, and give opportunity. And that's one of the things that I think we should learn out of this. That you need, you need to check before giving information to the total group. If it's a controversial information, select the quick adapters. Talk to them. By the time it reaches others, you'll have a bigger body of people to help you to convince the rest of the group. Jesus used such a formula. And James, our candidate, was one such quick adapter whom Jesus could use. He, as a leader, who are the quick adapters? And it is not favoritism. It's a question of progressing the organization using a wise way of approach. So quick adapters are used. If they can adapt, it will help you rather than just tell the whole congregation at the same time. It will help you in them sharing the information. You know, Jesus, James' zeal for Jesus is what really is seen in him dying. He was killed with a sword in order for King Herod Agrippa I of Judea about AD 44 to be happy. It was anyway, however, a general persecution of the early church. But of course, <coughs> James must have been a prominent leader for them to go for him. Because he was supposed to be killed so that others get afraid and stop this message. Just look at Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. Now, my friend, once death is not a threat, you can grow your leadership. This guy, whatever the Jews were, of course, and they were very, they were very unhappy, Jews were very unhappy, he stood his ground. And he was therefore very easy, easy to pick. Who will progress your project? Unless there is somebody who is willing. And the leader should be in the forefront in taking risks for the sake of the group. That part of what will help progress the group. You know, um, once when he and his brother asked Jesus for the privilege of sitting beside him in glory, accompanied by their mother, 
Jesus promised them only a share of his suffering. What a, what a message. What they wanted is greatness. They thought, yeah, that I can't promise. But I promise you, you will suffer like I will do. They were learning the greatest calling of, of a servant of Jesus is to serve others. Live to serve others. James discovered that following Jesus Christ can lead to hardship, persecution, and at times, death. But the reward is great. The reward is eternal life with him in heaven. Leadership should be defined by service to others. James learned that from his master. That you don't become a leader in order to be famous. You become a leader in order to help people. That anybody, the whole of your life, people will be remembering the, how you have helped them out of situation. Leadership is service. That's why a leader is, is, not, the, is not the usual leader in a pyramid where he is at the top. It should be a pyramid upside down where the leader is at the, at the apex. is actually carrying the whole weight, serving everybody within the organization. That serve, what we call servant leadership is something that will certainly help. You know, in Luke chapter 9, verse 52, we read, and he sent the messengers on ahead who went to the Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people were there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. And they went another, to another village. What are we learning? The, these people, a leader must not take violence as a solution. And they learned their lesson. What really was gotten, gotten into these people? They had seen power. They had been sent two by two. And they had seen God use them to do miraculous things. And you know, like Shakespeare says, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. My leader friend, my you be, are you becoming so powerful? It's getting into you. And because it's getting to you, you feel like using the power to correct things. No, no, no. Jesus told them that's not the way to do it. And you need to understand, if you choose violence, it will destroy your leadership. And that will be something that uh, you need to, to deal with. So, what are the lessons you are learning from James? You have learned that, that, that um, coming from the same family with, with a leader does not stop you becoming a leader. Do not think that because you have, your brother is great, you can't become great. And I think that will be important. Each one of us is unique, even if you are twins. Each one of us is unique. James and John, sons of Salome and Zebedee, are together, but they both become great. Not one and not the other, without the other. And that's very important. Number two, we have learned about loyalty. They were loyal to Jesus. And obviously, in the process, he did teach us the importance of loyalty in leadership. A leader must be loyal to the group so that the group can earn loyalty from him. And I think that's, that's important. And we have also learned that if you really are going to, to go places, you must be ready to suffer. Two things, leadership is service and willingness to take risks. You know, a risk doesn't mean a, a danger, but it means the possibility of danger. This guy stood his ground. The same one was saying, let's call fire from heaven. When finally the Jews got fed up with the new faith, it is James they picked to destroy. I need to understand, if you agree to become a leader, you are exposing yourself. Number one, you have to do more than others are doing. Number two, it means when, the, when people want to show that group they are not happy with your group, it's you they will try to destroy. So you, are, you serve others by becoming a leader. You take risks on behalf of the group. And when you do that, people give you a bigger commitment. And with that bigger commitment, the projection of the group is much further. The group will go to what is the desired end much faster when they have such a leader. Thank you very much.